All right, so we're back here on a few points from perfect, and this is yeah, round multiple. We're not we're not gonna we decide we're not gonna name these things because right. we have to quote put a bit of. I just showed up, but it is round three. <laughs> 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 so uh, who is that guy? You might ask. That's the one and only, the one and only, LoggerWade.com. <laughs> or else. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, so here's what we're gonna cover a little bit this evening. First off, how long have we known each other? Uh, 2000 and something. I'd say we've known each other our whole lives. We've been good friends for about 15 yep. years. Probably. Probably. And neighbors for about that long. Yep. Yep. And tick a lot alike. <laughs> yeah, Except so. he's a smart one. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say for me and you are a lot alike. Yep. And especially from a business side of things. Yeah, for, well, except for the fact that you do it better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but where I'm going, where I'm going with this is, is if you got a big, big business decision or something big, a big transition yeah. going on yeah. with what you got going on, yeah. you usually come find me. Yeah, we bounce each other. And, other's and I'm the yeah. same way. If yeah. I got a big business decision yeah. or a big transition going on, and what I'm got going on, you're the first guy I go find yeah. and talk to. Yeah, and and it's it's a lot. It's really amazing to be neighbors like that. Yeah, and, which, and still. Th- I think a lot alike. Which you know, is this. really great because we get so entrenched in what we're doing. Yeah, you forget to step up out of the trench and look around. Yeah, look around. So yep. it's, uh, yeah, we've, it's, we're lucky to have each other. We're, yep, now amen. We're, now we're getting amen. all, we're getting all, uh, sa- we're getting all sappy. So, so, so what you're saying is this is going to be a long one. <laughs> 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 we're getting all sappy and all off course. <laughs> so one thing, you've been doing YouTube for 12, 11, 12 years. Yes, not not successfully, but yes. <laughs> so one thing that I feel like that you have, no, not, I don't want to say this wrong, but one thing that's never been covered thoroughly, it's been covered in pieces, but one thing that's never been yeah. covered thoroughly in like one sitting is um, one, how Phil H and Timber Harvest come to yeah. be, yep. and two, awesome. how you've kind of worked your way into being the one that's slated to take it over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still got a ways to go, but yeah, because be that, there. Yeah. me knowing your family, because our families have done business together for 50 yeah. years. Yes. So me knowing your family, me kind of seeing the behind the scenes a little bit, I guess, and knowing mm-hmm. what all, what you guys went through to get where you're at today is just short of amazing. So yeah. Let, yeah. let's okay. start, let's start. <laughs> I'll buy that, I guess. I'll buy that. <laughs> Y'all believe any of this? <laughs> This is not. This is pat not, yourself on the back. <laughs> this, this is not will of fortune. We're not buying pals here, okay? Because I was going to buy an R, and that's yeah, that's a mistake in itself. It's, it so never ends well. No, it never ends all right, well. So we're, we're, all right. So you guys stick with me here. We're in our time machine, okay, all, right? all right? Yeah. In our time machine, we're going back to what? Uh, probably late sixties. Yeah, 69 when they got married is a good year. <laughs> good position. Uh, yes. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry you don't know. Wait, who got married in 69? So what box are you checking on YouTube? Is this for kids? Or <laughs> so, you know what the uh, square root of 69 is? <laughs> what? I don't know. It's eight something. <laughs> Get the train back on the tracks, people. Okay. So, uh, what, uh, late sixties, your dad's in the custom dozing business. Yeah. Would he have like a little four fifty John Deere? They got, yeah, they got. He started with a, yeah, it was a four fifty. Oh, I've heard about. Started with the four fifty cosine with uh, an uncle that uh, liked a bottle. <laughs> uh, but he's a good man. He's a good man. People person. He loved people, and he, and he believed in Big Daddy, and he wanted to get him started. We call him Big Daddy. Those of you that are not right. familiar with this, but. So your your mom and dad are freshly married. Uh, your dad's uh, got him a little dozer now, and he's doing a yeah. lot of work for basically doing a lot of they work. They started. For, dad started working for a bridge company. Really? I did. Yeah, I have heard the stories. <laughs> yes. So they got in this. Uh, what's it? It's not a. Uh, what's the? It's the motors in the back. What's them cheap cars? They're like a Volkswagen, but they're even cheaper. <laughs> yeah, 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 it gets worse. <laughs> there's something oh, wait, there's more. It, uh, <laughs> There's, there's, there's more. Is it Studebaker? Is it Studebaker? Studebaker. No. There's uh, more. It's the motor. It's behind me. Yeah. What? Heck, it was a Volkswagen. What kind of Volkswagen? It's not the Bug, but the other one. The Beetle? No, not the It's the same thing. The Bug? Anyway, it's like a Volkswagen Beetle. Okay? <laughs> this thing's like a Volkswagen. And they went up to the bridge job. After they got married, they, they canned everything and stuff. Mom grew a big garden and stuff like that. And they went up. They throw two coon dogs in a 
front of this car because the motor's in the back. <laughs> so don't take your nose in front of this side of You imagine driving down the road and <laughs> someone <laughs> staring at you? Dad, Dad said about halfway north they got gas, and he said the trip was horrible. Ears, <laughs> ears flopping, this, this, drool this, all over the windshield. <laughs> and Mom, she she graduated real high in her class. Uh-huh. So And then she married this guy. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> Out of curiosity, did Anne graduate really high in her class? <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyways, they went up there and lived in a little, little crap box house and uh, g- g- garden and stuff like that, the can and all this. So wait, which stuff. bridge was this? Somewhere up in Madison, Indiana. Okay. Somewhere up in Madison, Indiana. So anyways, that's where they started. Broke is a joke, you know, and started out like that, you know. And uh, dad comes from your, a family your dad, 12 kids. Yeah, I was going to say, your dad grew up very, very yeah. poor. Yeah. Your mom grew up on a pretty pretty well-off farm. I wouldn't say they were wealthy by any stretch of the imagination. No, but, but they, they, was, they was good with money. Uh, Grandpa Carter, he'd had a leg up. They actually got gave. Uh, great-grandpa gave, gave, gave them at their wedding, a, uh, or, you know, his wedding gift, they gave them to uh, workhorses. So they had two workhorses going into it, mm-hmm. and they had in a farm. I'm sure was bought at a decent price. Right. Was bought from Mama's family, which is the Burtons. Mm-hmm. So they had a leg up, and they didn't waste it. They took the leg up, and they built family wealth. You know, and it started with two workhorses. <laughs> All right. Now, so where'd they have the engine? In the back. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the exhaust comes yeah. out. <laughs> he beat me to it. I was going there. Believe it or not, there wasn't none of them death filters on this. <laughs> <laughs> they were a little Man, hit. I think this one needs a clean out. <laughs> <laughs> they were a little hit and miss depending on their diet. Yeah. Let the cow pee on it, it'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> At some point in time, someone's gonna right, find so it wealthy. We're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna fast forward a little bit. So now you're Oh, and Papa could not stand the fact that mom married dad. Yeah. <laughs> could not stand it. <laughs> this is a pretty well known yeah. fact, by the way. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And mom said he decided mom was boy crazy. That's what he decided. And mom said, I love, I, I fell in love with Phil because he could out drive, out drink, and out laugh about any man she'd ever been around. <laughs> That's because his engine I'm was glad. in the back. Yeah. I'm, glad she, I'm, glad she, I'm glad she stopped on one of yeah. those. Yeah, I was going to say, pretty high standards in a mate. <laughs> I mean, in these parts, that's a catch. Yeah, it's a, it's a, he had all his teeth, too. <laughs> Okay, so we got to get back to this bulldozer he's finally got. So, yeah, so he got a bulldozer, and he, and he started out with Grandpa, uh, well, his dad's two-ton truck, would pull the livestock racks off of it, and uh, would bank load it. You know, always put the truck on the bank, and then the stuff, and then the Papa Willie when you get up on it with the dozer <laughs> stuff. Everybody thought he was nuts and stuff, and fell off of it quite a few times. Oh, yeah, I've heard It was a steel bed, like... you know, fell off of it a few times. But it, was, it was completely legal, he right? He was determined, oh, so and it started with a uh, adjustable wrench. Uh-huh. And what else? A big <laughs> screwdriver. Story. We started out with a big screwdriver and adjustable wrench, and that was it. And that's no bull mess. That's how it happened. That's, yeah. So, so he's basically at this point, he's got this. And a custom. fifty-five gallon barrel, they put fuel in. <laughs> so at this point, he's got this dozer, and he's doing custom jobs for farmers and stuff. So the story I've heard is at some point he does a job for a farmer, and there's some trees to haul off. He takes some trees off, and all of a sudden he's got some logs he's got to get rid of. Well, there, it's kind of fuzzy, and, and and I'm not a good one for that story. Uh. But you know, Dad, Dad was the second oldest in a bunch of and a pile of kids, and they kind of is one of them deals where once you pop so many kids out, you're like, hey, old ones watch the young ones. You know what I mean? There's kids with stuff sticking out their heads and stuff. You know. But anyways, uh, so Dad had he was real had motherly instinct like you couldn't imagine, or fraternal instinct, I guess you'd call yeah. it. He had a fraternal instinct like you couldn't imagine. Loved his siblings and taught the world of them. And he had the feeling, I don't know what put it in him, but he had the feeling that he had to make a future for his family. That, and he felt like that was his, you know, at the time, no kids and stuff like that. So anyways, he got in his custom dozer, and they got to rent a dozer. So they ended up on a big pond push, and they had uh, two small dozers rented. Right. That's what, you know, the, the bill could afford. Right. You know, and then uh, Greg got that. Well, they started out with Dad and Greg not shifting. Uncle Greg was uh, one of the partners later on uh, uh, and we'll get to Greg again later. In yeah, and Grandpa Aitchin, now um, Dad's dad, he he farm, come from generations of loggers. Farm all summer, log in the winter, log in sawmill in the winter, that type of thing. 
So there was never, they was always around it. Hell, Dad grew up pulling with an 8 in Ford tractor right. and stuff like that, you know, getting in all kinds of funky situations. But uh, anyways, uh, broke my chain of thought. So, save me. Well, yeah, I'll save you. So basically, the custom dozing is slowly starting to turn into logging. Yes. <clears throat> Well, no, it's, it's a, well, they, they, they wanted to keep with it. Dad wanted to stay with custom dozing and farming. But Dad the, but, was not the logger. But, but he's seen the money. Greg. Yeah. But they, Greg's seen the sickness. It had nothing to do with money. <laughs> Trust me, it never did. <laughs> well, that looks fun. I'd like to try it. <laughs> if they went into it saying we're going to make money, that was the wrong turn. <laughs> All right, you so, know how you become a millionaire in the timber business? Start out a billionaire. <laughs> they say the same thing. So it's worse than farming. Yeah, they, they say the same thing about excavators. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So, so we're now we're custom dozing and, uh, from, uh, from the um, influence of your Uncle Greg. We ended up on this property up here. Where right. Where we live. On our hilltop. On Martin Which Ridge. is Martin Ridge. Yep. So with the influence of your Uncle Greg, now we're going down the logging route. Yes. Basically, they, they logged out with Martin Ridge. And bought it as an event. Mom ran a store down Derby. Yep. Not the same and, one and we run today. Different yeah, store. Yeah, did different store than his family runs, but, clo you know, the same. Mentality. Same difference, yeah. So, anyways, you get to seeing a lot of people coming in. And back then, it was before internet and all that stuff. So, right. you, you, you didn't. This is uh, probably mid 70s. Yes, yes. And uh, they got a deal up here at the Alice Martin place. So the old Which Alice for Martin people who don't know, just a fun little. Uh, yes, fun you can tra look it up. Look up. Look Alice up Martin. Alice Martin. She was a very um, trapeze artist, famous trapeze artist that actually got murdered up here on Wade's property. Mm -hmm. So uh, oh, no that's yeah, a whole other story. You can I, go. I got witnesses. <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> mostly, mostly. She his, had it coming. No, no, mostly, <laughs> mostly his date of birth because she was killed before he was born. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, she had the so, engine in the front. So anyways, <laughs> this place was grown up a lot of timber, and. Uh, the, through mom's family, th that side of the family, there's a logger. End up logging it. Greg got the sickness. Uncle Greg's how it started. The, 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 the circle goes all the way back to Uncle Greg. Uncle Greg was an awesome person. Yeah, you and your Uncle Greg were pretty close. Uh, yeah, and he was a super duper person. And dad loved him unconditionally. And, and Greg and dad felt like Greg's, he had like a parental thing for Greg. Greg liked logging. Dad was a farmer. We bought a nice TW20, a brand new TW20. Bought some of these bottom grounds. Yep. We was going into farming. That's what we was going to do. We was going to be farmers. Well, Uncle Greg changed that. He decided <laughs> we was going to be loggers. So, surprise. And Dad, he, Dad was like me. He wanted to just, he was spunky, just yep. wanted to work. You know, yep. so, well, that's what Uncle Greg wants to do. Let's do it. By God, that's yep. what we're going to do. So, anyways. All right, so now you're in the logging business. Mm -hmm. we, we skipped a few steps in there, but we're kind of mm -hmm. getting highlights here. So now you're in the yep. logging business. Yep. So at some point in this, your dad heavily invested into a sawmill. Oh, that's later on. Yeah, we got to be good loggers. Okay. We, so Joe what do you Glenn do? come into the and mix, and Joe Glenn trains timber cutters. And Joe Glenn's been in some of your videos. Yeah, and Joe Glenn trains timber cutters through multiple states, through the... Um, uh, I don't know Game of logging, timber cutting class. It's 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 it's, it's a it's a government approved training. It's a big deal. It, it's a big deal. But that started. Joe started. Dad broke Joe in on a chainsaw. Just give him a chainsaw. Really? Said, don't kill yourself. <laughs> and he left him. Joe like, said, should... "No, I he'd come back. I had stuff watered out. He said it hadn't been thrown on the ground. I didn't know what I was doing." <laughs> so, anyways, but I should probably start a training course. Is what he thought. Yeah. So basically, yeah. mom, dad, Joe. Mom, Dad, Greg, and Joe was the four uh, original loggers. Original loggers. And, and your mom drove log because by this point, yeah. your mom sold the store. Yeah. And she was driving a log truck, right? Yeah. And not because it's a good financial decision, mind you. None of this was a good financial decision. <laughs> it was because there was kids. Everybody was kids. And that's what they wanted to do. Yeah. So that's what they decided they was going to do. It had nothing to do with money. Although dad had this parental thing, but that's what everybody wanted to do. And dad wanted to make sure they could do it. So at this point, how proud is uh, Grandpa Carter? <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't talk for years. I mean, it was bad. It was bad. And they was all nuts. They was all kids. It's a miracle any of them survived. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, so the logging, th the logging thing's trucking along here a little bit. They yep. caught some traffic. Oh, and I remember one good story. Right. My dad, I'd love to tell us on here. 
So nobody knew anything about logging. I mean, logging is complex, but nobody knew anything about it. So dad ends up on the hillside with this, uh, by this time it's a 450, ends up on the hillside this 450 dozer around the yard. Dad always worked oh, the yard no, and it I've was hammer, 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 <laughs> hammer. So anyways, he ends up up there. Uh, it was close to dinner time. The ground was a freezing thaw. You know, during the day it would try to thaw, but at night it would freeze up. The ground was froze, and you know how a dozer is with a little bit of powder snow on, <laughs> frozen ground. Well, Big Daddy never got the memo. So, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so he's up there trying to push his tree to set back on somebody. No, Dad was cutting on a spare time, so he's trying to push his tree over and set back on it. He gets up there as a dozer, that son of a buck takes off, gets sideways. That sunbuck takes off over the hill 90 mile an hour. And of course, everybody's sitting there eating dinner. And on the way down the hill, Big Daddy jumps the rest of the way on the dozer <laughs> because it was, you know. And on the way down the hill, this thing had picked up in an impressive amount of speed. <laughs> everybody's eating dinner watching this madman go like crazy. And like, what is he going to do next? Well, anyway, this dozer finally slides all the way down the hill, chalks in the ground, and stands up on its side. And it didn't turn all the way over. It get it teetered just perfect to where it was gonna stop and sit there a second and then lay back down. Well, Big Daddy uses the momentum to like Kent Block, like a good Kent Block pigeon. So he uses the momentum <laughs> to grab his chainsaw and step off the dozer and the dozer falls down away from him and goes, fires the saw and goes back to cut. <laughs> it was stupid stuff like that the whole time. <laughs> They had a state inspector one day that somebody set up a chain reaction of trees. They hated the state inspector. It's a federal inspector, actually. So they hated this federal inspector with a passion. So he was up one day slinging mess, you know, trying to be a pain in everybody's butt. And uh, the timber cutter had set up five or six trees where it looked like an accident and it'd fall on his Jeep. <laughs> This was, out uh, the woods. this was after more than 10 years ago. It was the 70s. <laughs> I wasn't around. Oh, so there's there's no incarceration. I think everything flew then. That was yeah. smoking the Bandit come out. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, smoking the Bandit messed up a lot of OSHA <laughs> issues. So anyways, <laughs> he was getting ready to trigger the... Oh, sorry, I was spitting. <laughs> he was getting ready to trigger the trigger tree when Dad got him stopped. <laughs> and it was going to... So basically, the trigger tree and, he's, and, and the gun specker leaves, and he goes, "Let me, let me, let me do it." And Dad said, "All right, go ahead." <laughs> Triggers the son of a buck. Perfect. It would have got the jeep just perfect, and he'd be like, "Well, it was an accident. I had no." <laughs> I'm sorry. But that sir. was the crazy mess that was that got them all uh, going. So that was the beginning of Phil yes. Agent Timber Harvest. Yes, <laughs> it was rugged, but it was something. So, yeah. so at what point during this time did you guys venture into the sawmill business? Well, it got to where. Sawmills was constantly choking you off. They wanted you to. They wanted you to go when it's time to go, and they wanted you to woe when it's time to woe. And that always didn't agree with the checkbook. That I'm always sure. didn't agree with the, the cash flow issue. So, Dad decided if we could get into the sawmill business and get ourselves the next step in line, we could control our own destiny a little bit better. The whole thing was about controlling our own destiny. That's where all this started. So that what? Was the motive. So you guys have had. You guys have made three attempts to be in the sawmill business, and I know it. Y yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly right. Oh, yeah. Priceless. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 That's exactly right. All right. right. So yeah. uh, let's just start attempt one. I guess the third one is not an attempt. It's still going. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, so the first one was up here on the property. It was a small stick mill. You ever heard of a stick mill? Look it up. A stick mill is a. That was what a stick mill. Like during the industrial revolution, we were pretty simple people. Uh, our industry is. But during the Industrial Revolution, our part in the timber industry was the stick mill. Look it up sometime. It's a, but that, that's what gave the edge. Our industrial part of the Industrial Revolution was the stick mill. We had a little stick mill on a farm here. And, uh, that's so it was up here on this property? Yeah, it was so up here. I, I didn't even know that. Uh, the stick mill was actually within 40 yards where Alice Martin was buried <laughs> <laughs> before the authorities found her. <laughs> So the stick mill had the engine in the front. <laughs> like <Alex Martin. laughs> uh, if I could circle back, because I mean, I, I'm enjoying this a lot, but I got to okay. know. The, the inspector's Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> Where He's was a wired little seven buck, and that day out of the woods, Dad said, 
I wanted to hit him so hard. He said, and I've hit so many people. He said it on the way out. He said, I'm going, Phil, don't do this. Phil, don't do this. Phil, don't do this. And he said, that wiry little son. <laughs> he said, then I get out there and I keep my lid on. And I look out there and the timber cutter's already set up. Five trees to smash the Jeep on the way. <laughs> you know, I could just see... I could just see, and I know who the timber cutter is. I'm not going to say. Allegedly. But I could just see. see. I know the guy. I could see him going, oopsie poopsie. <laughs> <laughs> now, did he land it on the engine? Yeah. <laughs> it it would have been, put it this way, it would have been a direct hit. Yeah. I'm not a nuclear physicist, but it would have been a direct hit. I'm no physicist, but I'll tell you the truth. I couldn't even spell that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, All right, so, so yeah, go ahead. So attempt one. We, so your first, your first venture into the sawmill business was a stick mill up here on the property. Yes. Number venture number two was. Well, how we long, real how quick long, about a partner. How, <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's good. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there, Wade. So, so how long did you guys operate the stick mill? I did, it, was, it was really a lot of loggers out there in our part of the world. They do this, you know. Wintertime, rained out, bored. So it was a. It was more of a. More of a hobby mill. More of a hobby mill. But 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 if you didn't have nowhere to go with logs, you there go you up go. there. You go up there yeah. and yeah. Our so, markets are in the toilet. We we try to pull it out with our own, which was labor so, intensive and, and silly. So attempt to, you guys are going big time now. Well, we're tempted to, yeah. Well, that was the plan. Yes. And because we owe a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so what better way to pay it off than to spend so, so if you keep buying new stuff and you're gonna and, and that's what people get the cycle people get themselves into they buy something new and then the numbers ain't driving yep so if we get this new thing then that'll make this work well when they get this well this thing ain't working well let's get another new thing that makes these two new things work <laughs> no, no, good. This, this thing and we be... can outrun this thing with cash flow <laughs> well in the, in the short term, all that matters is cash flow. In the long term, all that matters is profit. So yeah. if you try to cash flow your way out of a long term problem, <laughs> that goes in line with that one joke you used to tell me about a horse and a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> you, want, you want to tell that? <laughs> Dear God, please give me another timber boom. I promise I won't piss this one away. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, so this second this second attempt in the sawmill business, I'm. I'm not a sawmill guy, but I am very, very, very familiar with this. No, mill. no, that wasn't a mill. That wasn't no, the that mill. Wasn't a mill. That was the... what they put as a, somebody with a. Some, some, that so was you're what, talking. What the mill you seen was, was a coal miner that decided he could run a sawmill. Put in. So that was that attempt. So there was four attempts. Count no, 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 that was that was nothing to do with okay. us. That okay. was later on. Okay, okay, so there's this. This crazy man. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I know who's very political, which we're not political here. But this crazy <laughs> man that was very political <laughs> had, had basically uh, a rundown mill. It was basically a rundown mill. Um, and he had money issues because he tried to live the high life. Race cars, dirt track racing was big at the time. He blowed a chunk of money in race cars, racing horses. Dumb stuff like it had nothing to do with cutting, you know, sawmill. So, so was the blue mill at the same place the Job mill was? Yeah, you, no, no, the blue mill was in St. Mark's. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So when that that they was a good family, but they was getting out kind yeah. of thing. Transition. Transition period for their family, and then we had to move on because their family was transitioning there, and we went yeah, to the the, uh, the, pu the puzzle keep piece. The name is like Jobs. Well, did you get <laughs> the puzzle pieces didn't fit. Yeah. So anyways, so they had nothing, so they're just, Big Daddy, he's just a ball of ambition and, and no, you know, and, and nobody was experienced. So he went into partnership, which is, you know, there's two types of ships that sink. <laughs> One of them's a partnership. So anyways, so they went into a partnership with, uh, heard that. so they went into this partnership with this guy that owed a lot of money, but Excuse was good me. about hiding it. Is the other one a submarine? <laughs> Asking for a friend. <laughs> I'm curious now. That is a delicious sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> now he's forgot where he's at. I'll be back just to playing in a maritime situation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you're in a partnership. So what if they forget to show? Okay, so anyways. So, they get in a partnership with a guy that's really good at hiding his debt. 
load. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> this guy actually got mad enough at another, he was one of these big splinters. He goes in a store, yep. change in her pocket, ching, ching in her change and stuff. You know what I mean? Bippity bop. You know, do that type of talk. There was another guy in the county that done that, which you tore down part of his. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so we'll keep that in the yeah, street. We'll keep, yeah. So anyhow, they was friends. I got your not last to, not to, Yeah, not the people here, but they was friends, these two was, until they didn't agree with each other, and then they was not so much friends. big enemies. Not so anyways, one anymore. of them ended up getting his Cadillac toted across the log yard with the fork load one day, <laughs> and dumped across in the sawdust pile. So this is the type of crazy mess that was going on that mom and dad bought into. Some Meanwhile, mom's popping out babies, driving long trucks, <laughs> and trying to, and trying to make a future, dig a future out of this pile of Cadillacs kind of and zombies. Mess. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, anyways, hey, uh, another question: What what engine was the cat? Was the Cadillac front engine? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm gathering that the Agent family does not like. Cars. Was there any coon dogs harmed in the process <laughs> of dumping this Cadillac? <laughs> He did make him buy him a new one. He yeah. actually did have to buy him a new one, like the, the lawyer or whatever they had to make him buy So this, him. Uh, explain a little bit about this mill, because this mill was... It was a POS. But is this the mill I'm thinking of? Mismanaged, yeah. Okay. It's but, a mismanaged POS, and but they learned this, a lot about managing But this people. thing was advertised as about being the biggest one of them. Oh, yeah. I mean, nice. it was supposed yeah. to be the... It was supposed to... Cadillac. Kind of like pump anyways. out the, you know, the most lumber, and nobody could ever feed it. It was just supposed to be yes. the cat's meow. So what my, Big Mom and Big Daddy got a crash course was, is when you bought into this partnership, this guy owed a lot of money, and he was a bull master. But anyways, he quickly used their credit Your ability, mom and dad's. Mom and dad's credit ability, because he wasn't a dummy, he was just broke. But anyways, <laughs> so he was completely unrelated. Now, wait a minute. Is, well, if you go broke, does that make... Okay. So anyways, <laughs> so... Uh, he used Big Mom and Big Daddy's credit limit to buy another sawmill in the town of St. Croix. Yeah. Quickly, before Dad and Mom smartened up on this stuff. So next thing you know, he's still out there with the race car and the dumb stuff and the circle track stuff. Meanwhile, Mom and Dad's working all night hauling logs and stuff trying to keep these mills going. Well, fit hit the shan, so to speak. <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> it was time to draw the line and decide. And, and this guy, all the way to the end, just trying to get more and milk more because these dumb kids have worked their butts off for nothing. You know mm -hmm. that type of thing? Well, they finally put their foot down. And what we ended up with out of the whole deal, the only assets we ended up with was this small hurdle mill, small Healy mill out of St. Croix. Which is the location where you're at now. Which was actually the second prime pick at the time <laughs> you know well hold location. on didn't you get a nice prime saw dusty cadillac <laughs> but, what, i have no idea what ever happened to the cadillac but it's it probably was buried in his home story yeah. saw dust i could just see they was he was red faced you won't do it you son of a bucking butt and they were using different language but anyways he <laughs> clamps that daggone cadillac over the sawdust oh, pile she right, goes right in front of him <laughs> oh not like oh, no he was sitting there screaming the whole time he won't touch my dad. You know, there's a whole mess of words. And, of course, Mom comes in eight months pregnant in a log truck trying to make a future out of this pile of schniz and, and sees this idiot packing a Cadillac across the daggone. And it was like, it wasn't like an old piece of crap Cadillac. It right. was a nice car. It's being packed across the yard in a fork loader and dumped over the sawdust pile. So this is one thing I want to point out about this whole scenario, knowing a little bit about the scenario. The buoyancy of the Cadillac. Okay. <laughs> so the, 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 the partnership is sunk at this point. Yes. Like the Cadillac. Along Cadillac. with the Cadillac. Yeah. So you guys, are, you guys are moving in St. Croix, but one thing you guys did at this point. Is acquired his debt. Well, uh, what, <laughs> what I was getting ready to say is, is anybody else I know, uh, you guys should have filed bankruptcy at this point. I oh mean, yeah, you guys are way upside down. Oh yeah, we would we would we would kick, we would fight, and now I'm speaking for them. I wasn't around yet. Well, I was around, but I was a kid riding a log truck. But no matter what happened, there was no bankruptcy to be filed. Yeah, so you're you're we what, ain't mooching or screwing nobody out. So of your anything. mom and dad pulled up their big boy pants yep. and they just and put their head down. Assumed a half. I'll say it, assumed a half a million dollars. And this is in, in the 70s. Yeah. Assumed a half a million dollars as somebody else's debt. Now, mom and dad was in great financial shape when we bought into this. And But you come out the other side, not so much. Not so much, yeah. 
Okay. So now we're now you guys are in St. Croix. Mm -hmm. You got an immense amount of debt, mm -hmm. and you got uh, I wouldn't call it a little old POS mill, but you got something to Pretty work with. Pretty close to a little POS mill. Something, something to work with, but it's not much. Yeah, something to work with. Enough. They've seen enough potential where, with a little elbow grease and a little bit of grit, we can pull her pull ourselves can, up by the bootstraps and work. come out of this. So over the course of the so, uh, if I may. So half a million dollars in 1970 is equivalent to 3.354 million dollars today. I can't count past 10, so that's a lot of numbers. That's way too many commas. <coughs> How many zeros is that? <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four, five, five, okay. six, five. twelve, thirty, oh, wow. eighty-nine. Yeah. Right. All right. So over the course of the next what, probably 10 years, you guys start working this debt off. And then, yeah. And then through the 80s. Yeah. So. At some point in here, your dad's brother started getting involved. Well, they was involved, and now Greg was with dad. So your Greg's with dad Uncle the whole time? Uncle Greg and dad was like peas and carrots. Now, did, did Greg ever have any ownership in this at this point? Yes. He, when they went in with the meal, dad, Big Daddy, you know, Big Daddy, <clears throat> Greg, and Joe, which I ain't going to get into the Joe thing, but, I mean, it was they was the big four players. Okay. And when Big Daddy and Big Mama finally had to get out, they said, Greg, this is a shit, uh, excuse me, a crap show. This is a crap show. We are going to have to get in this sawmill, and we don't know anything about sawmill. And and they basically, uh, I don't know how the logging was bought out, but Greg basically bought out or whatever. All the equipment went to Greg. So at this point, Greg's doing most of the logging. And Greg's the logging, and, and overnight, <clears throat> they turn into sawmillers. Okay. So... And didn't know anything about it. <laughs> Not a thing. So, so they watched a lot of YouTube then. <laughs> yeah, out, yeah, it was a lot of YouTube. So yeah. figured out how to run. I think this was long before Google or YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> logging podcasts. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it was. So yeah. at some point, your dad's other brother Doyle comes into this. Now Doyle, he was his kind of his own logger. Doyle kind of did his own thing, and uh, it got to where the, the federal shutdown. That you know, there's cycles. There's uh, political cycles. And it was a cycle of we're going to lock up the federal force and we're not going to touch it and we're going to turn to California where it catches on fire. But anyways, <laughs> well, that at that like point, it. it was really cool to be not a part of managing forests. So when the federal shut down, that really put a because we live in a county. What, what's the stats? It's uh, seventy six thousand. About uh, sixty percent of our county is federal forest. Yep, and that's where we made our living. We made our living with trucks and log trucks. And then all of a sudden, it shut down. So Greg stepped up to the plate. Uncle Greg stepped up to the plate with semi-tractor trailers, max, with their uh, camelback suspension, get off the road type of mentality. Yep. And uh, we go went to the we'll go to the trees. And basically, what we done is we went to Floyd Knobs, which was very steep ground. I don't care what part of the country you're from, steep, steep. It was deep ground. Basically, they went to ground that other people wouldn't log to try to make ourselves. Which was there. also good timber there because nobody else yes, would log it. Yeah, because nobody logged it. Yeah. And they had their <clears throat> feller bunchers and. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, it was push button. It was drone. It was cut drones. Okay. You just so, push the button. And so it, essentially, they're how old? GPS it in there, you know. Yeah, they're how old? Do what? About how old are they now? Uh. Rough guess. 80s. Yeah. 80s, 90s. So I guess, I guess throughout, from what from an outsider looking in, from what I can... And Doyle come along. Doyle was a very good logger. Yeah, so what I guess what ended up transitioning over the course of about 10 years, and correct me if I'm wrong, is your mom and dad were running the sawmill. Doyle was kind of doing the logging, and, and Greg kind of transitioned into the trucking, right? Uh, everybody did their own trucking. trucking. Doyle had trucks. Uh, Uncle Herman had trucks. Doyle had trucks. Greg had trucks. We had trucks. But you guys did some logging, but you were more focused on the mill. No, we way. was 100% sawmill. I grew up a sawmill brand. Right. So you weren't, at this at this point, for what this probably 7 to 10 year span, your dad and your family. Right. 20 years span. 20, okay. You're not cutting trees at this point. Nope. The brothers are doing that. Yep. You're sawmilling. Yep. And you guys actually got some debt 2000, paid off? 2000, yeah. <clears throat> we started getting ourselves in better debt regulation, but then we jumped in bed with the chip company. Which is a big no no. So <laughs> I guess we're to kind of to kind of graph this out a little bit is you start what did you upgrade the mill? We upgraded the mill basically when they shut down the federal, which is in the late eighties. Uh, when they shut down the federal it was in the late eighties. And uh, 
Big Mom and Big Daddy is like, well, let's get political and let's fight this. Well, they end up actually getting two senators kicked off. Hmm. But they basically come find out they learned a lot about politics, too. <laughs> so uh, the I senators basically sent lawyers down and grubbers down, you know, to deal and found out where Dad flew, flighted, uh, kited a check once. He yeah, didn't know what he's done, and they told him they, they, what he no, done. They said, the bankers looks at him and goes, you just committed bank fraud. Absolutely What's nothing that? intentional. Yeah, it's not intentional. Yeah. He didn't know what bank fraud was, but we committed it. So anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so we learned that lesson too along the way. Well, anyways, they come and they dug everything. He dug and dug and dug <coughs> until they found that where they caught it that check that time. Well, then it took him to federal court <laughs> to smear him. That's what he's trying to do for what they done to this guy that shut down the federal courts. Mm-hmm. And uh, the they they had the court federal court in Evansville or whatever. And uh, the judge said, and and a bunch of people wrote Big Daddy letter for Big Daddy on account of, account of Big Daddy, which is fantastic. How people love people. People don't know your dad. He's one of those guys. If he thinks he did anybody wrong, he's not going to sleep that night. Oh no, yeah, he, he, he is. He'll, that, he'll, that is just the way he is. I mean, he'll, he intends to make a living by working hard enough to cover up for anything else, you know. And he, yeah, it's, it's so far out of his character. So it's not even fathomable. When they was in federal court, people wrote letters. And sent them in bags and sent them to him. The judge said, asked the uh, 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 the uh, prosecutor. He said, "Did you see how many letters we got in here on this man's behalf?" And the prosecutor said, "Yeah." He said, "Well, I'm gonna tell you right now." He said, "This is a record in this courtroom. You know that, right?" And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they get done anyways. So that guy was over it or whatever. Big guy's walking out ready to he like to pinch somebody's head, you know. And the guy <laughs> walks up to him and said. You need to leave Mr. So and So alone or whatever, you know, and, and it, like it's no big deal. And Dad's like, you just drink my freaking life, you know. <laughs> you know. So, anyways, it, it wasn't that big a deal. So, anyways, long story short, to cut a long story short, they decided, all right, we're going to get efficient in sawmilling. We're going to earn every. We're going to get out of this political mess, which is just a cesspool of crap, and we're going to get good at sawmilling. We're going to get good at our job, and we're going to set up the future. So there was a. There was so a, we put in a mill. <coughs> You put it in the mail, and then there was a good... 92 record. to 97, 96. 92 to 96. Six, yeah, somewhere in there. Put in a mill. And you guys had a good run in there. Um, yes. Doyle was working. Greg was working. You the guys. The good run went from the late 80s to then. Yeah. When we got recashed up in the debt. Okay, so... So let's just say the first the first uh, partnership that sunk, you guys assumed all this debt. That's that that was you guys should have been done and out there, but mm-hmm. you persevered. You you pushed mm-hmm. through it. Grit. Yeah, mm-hmm. it just pure determination and perseverance. So now you're doing pretty good again. Mm-hmm. Then late nineties, early two thousand happens. Yeah, two thousand one, Greg got cancer. And uh, well, when when did uh, that was. After Doyle and your dad kind of had a little bit of a fall. No, uh, Greg got cancer in 2001. Okay. <clears throat> and then uh, Greg was having issues. Uh, he was having a few issues there. And uh, his wife come up to uh, his wife and mom was real close. You know, they, they was, you know, dad and d- dad. You would. It's hard to explain what Greg meant to Dad. Well, and to show how close knit we are, his wife, his widow, is still my secretary. Yeah, today. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so she come to Mom and said, "All right, I know y'all's debt your eyeballs, but you got to save Greg. Something's going on. Buy us out. Get us some cash, cause he's got some. He's got a brain tumor. And when." We bought him out. Of course, the employees didn't like it. It was well, it I mean, is, this place, I our wish, place. We have run company wrong a few times. And I wish we could do Greg justice because I, I got to know Greg personally. Greg was a good guy. He, mm-hmm. he was uh, he was one of a kind. Mm-hmm. He was. Um, they went to a basketball game in IU. This is before social media existed. They went to a basketball game in IU one time. Some big city. We're all country. We're all daggone freaking hillbillies to the core. And they went to a basketball game in IU one time. This big fancy college in Indiana that that put sweaters on trees. <laughs> <What>? So, anyways, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no,
we yeah. are not yeah. skipping over yeah. this. Well, they did well, one. They got, well, beech trees and sycamores have thin skin, so they get cold. So they put sweaters on. <laughs> yeah, retards. But anyways. <laughs> Tell me so, he's kidding. Really? No, no, I ain't kidding you. I ain't kidding you. So anyways, <laughs> they go to a basketball game up there, and somebody went with Greg up there to this basketball game. Here's Greg, his daggone heel jack that's done all that. Been everywhere. This guy's been all over the place doing cutting Kimber gills and doing stuff for people and stuff like that. Making friends a whole step of the way, not enemies. They go in this basketball game, and the guy going with Greg told me personally, he said, we walked in that basketball game. He said there was 20 people come up to him. Saying, hey, Greg, how's it going? Hey, Greg, how you doing? And then cutting up with him and everything. This place is 100 miles from home. Oh, yeah. yeah. In, the, in the 90s. This was in the 90s. 100 miles from home. Before internet ever happened. Yeah, Greg was a very... That's well, how his reputation <clears throat> scattered. Well-known, well-respected guy. And, and he fit the family build of being hardworking grit, just make it happen, get yep. her done. And loving people. Yeah. That's key. You're, um, not that your dad's not a people's person or a social, social person, but your, your, your Uncle Greg knew how to interact with people. Yes, Greg was very... Big Daddy always carried this <clears throat> black bag of mess on his shoulders. Now, he loved people, and he didn't want to do anybody wrong. But he still had this mysterious black bag on his shoulders because he was he always carried everybody's shortcomings on his shoulders. Greg was kind of free from that. He was kind of like me. He was yeah. kind of free from that. He was and a people he, person. He was a people person. He loved people. He could sit down with anybody, an old drunk on the sidewalk, the daggone yeah, um, President yeah. Trump. He could sit down with anybody and just – Want to talk to him? Want to ask him things? Want to you know cut up with him? You know, that was Greg. You know. So okay, so Greg's been diagnosed with a brain tumor now, and he you you've been approached to be to buy him out. Your mom and dad have been approached to buy him out, mm -hmm. and Greg's contribution to the business at this point is is logging and trucking. Correct? Yes, and trucking their logs in. Yes. Okay. Being being getting that raw product in there, that sawmill. Okay. So basically, and Uncle Dor. <clears throat> so basically, this is the first step of you guys getting into more than the sawmill business because now you're going to be in the trucking business. Well, in the, in the, in the, we was already in the trucking business. But, but, but you went, but you went from but, kind of in the trucking yeah, business to really in the trucking it, it, business. It, yeah, and in managing this situation, managing in the, the woods is very management intensive, uh, and there's no cheating. This is before feller bunchers, so. We get into that. I'm telling you, feller bunchers is cheating. We're gonna come around on that one. So, anyways, uh, does your feller buncher have the engine in the front or the back? <laughs> well, actually, it's on the side. Oh yeah, <laughs> we got a whole new one on yeah. this one. It's just like being in the back. Trust me. So, anyways, so, where do you put your coon dogs? Yeah. Well, the intended. real question is, where do you fill it with hydraulic oil? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, uh, so so we ended up getting a logging and. Uh, it was we was we was very debt bound, and somebody that's very debt bound is hard. To so, work uh, correct me if I'm or fill me in here a little bit. Is so whenever uh, you're you guys are buying Greg out, is this when the relationship with Doyle kind of started get sour? Well, a little that's bit? what I'm getting to. Okay. Because it, when we got debt bound, and I'm gonna sit here and be honest. Now, when we got debt, and I've learned a lot growing up through into this mess. When you get debt bound. And we should also point out at this point, you're really not involved with the business. You're still in high school. Oh, well, I'm out of high school, but I'm. But you have no. I grew up slow. I didn't grow up with. But you're sweeping floors and working at the mill. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so, but I'm witnessing this. Right, right. But I'm nowhere. I don't know the numbers. I don't know how to make stuff happen. You're, you're just, on the outside looking in. Yeah. So, during this mess, the the atmosphere becomes so toxic. This is when Clinton signed NAFTA, not to be political, but this is when NAFTA got signed, when that type of mess started happening, when the industry started leaving this country, was right when we was in debt up to our eyeballs. So, I mean, it was like a double smack in the face. So, now there's not a future for Americans, you know, so to speak, for working Americans anyways. Right. So, uh, that was going on along with the fact that we was in debt up to our eyeballs and now uncle greg's got cancer which has been in your corner from day one <clears throat> yes the the guy you constantly rely on to make it happen so now greg's got cancer all this mess is going on and uh it's looking bad it's looking bad it's it's there's people out there taking bets on whether we pull out of this or not you know 
the people didn't know. I ain't gonna get into all that. But anyways, so then it's at a time when Red Oak was still up. It wasn't down yet. The housing boom was going on. It was still pre two thousand eight, mm -hmm. pre two thousand six. There's a lot of options out there. And there's no animosity to Uncle Doyle. He he had options. Right. And at some point, Uncle Doyle's sitting there thinking, "Why would I stick with a sinking ship?" Well, I mean, looking at it, you know, yeah, looking at it from his point of view. Yeah, I this think is terrible. Was, this is a terrible business decision to stick with this company. It was. Um, I wouldn't say it was a mutual decision. Everybody split, but he kind of seen the writing on the wall mm -hmm. of where you guys were going. Yep. Him and your dad didn't quite have the same views on. Some oh, business. and the sibling rivalry. Yeah, well, Me and, and, and my the, siblings, we was acting like a bunch of. Oh. But but Doyle and your dad, not saying one was right or one was wrong, but their views on business was a little different too. Not bad, but some. Yeah. yeah. Some different. And the, Doyle was raising up three boys, mm -hmm. and they were very good loggers. They was focused. They had their stuff together. And here we <clears throat> sat as a bunch of siblings in this business, fighting like idiots. Going, it was ridiculous. You know what I mean? And, and 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 he's sitting there looking at this, and he's evaluating this, and he's thinking, "All right, I've got my stuff together. I keep my <laughs> debt. I keep my debt in order. Why am I here?" Yeah. So he ends up saying, and he then he did it good. I mean, he did it uh, respectably. Right. But he's like, "Hey, I'm gonna have to move on because this ain't working for me." So he takes the boys and he moves on. So at this point, this is early two thousands. Yes, like For, 2005, I think. Uh, when did Jeremy leave? Jeremy left at... When did you leave, Jeremy? It was like 2000. <laughs> Jeremy, like, Jeremy's not here, by the way. Yeah, like, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, uh, it's like 2005. Yeah, okay, so... And he was very good. Jeremy right. was very good. And, Which is Doyle's Doyle son. Yeah, very intelligent, very disciplined. These guys was winners. You know so I mean? for the so for the second time in 20 years, you guys you find yourself in this business alone mm -hmm. and dead up to your eyeballs. Yes, and not victims. We, right, this right. was self-made. We done this to ourselves. At this point in life, up to this point, we could blame somebody else, but not now. Now this was our bag of crap. So we for, made for ourselves. So for the second time, anybody, any normal person would have either threw yeah. In, either, either, oh yeah, either there threw was, in the towel. Vendors, they like they shut her parts off. They, you know, thank God co-op didn't shut her fuel off. They should. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's, so I at just... this point, then the sibling rivalry started to happen, and the kid, there wasn't enough of this, that, and the other to go around. And the problem with us kids, we was raised by people with grit. But we wasn't raised intelligent in the in the industry. So let's, so let's, we got to fight with each other. It turns so so let's um, let's hit on this a little bit. You're one of four. Mm -hmm. You got two sisters, mm -hmm. and you got one brother. Yes. And you held up one finger that whole time. Well, that he knows. He, me and Wade. Well, I was counting. I was counting yeah, fingers. Me, me, and Wade, fingers yeah, me and Wade. have a language over here. Well, well you can't sorry, count four. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> one, two, three, four. <laughs> 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 Well, you oh, yeah. your it's, all, it's, it's how many times you shake it. So, got it. at this point, uh, your oldest sister, Felicia, mm -hmm. your younger sister, or, or the younger sister, Sydney, mm -hmm. or Cindy, yep. um, your brother, Rob, yep. and yourself, yep. your mom and dad, yep. you guys are all in this, you're all in yes. this business together. Yes. Every, the whole family's working here. Yes, we find ourselves on our own. And big mom and big daddy knows how to put stuff together. They know how to make it happen. So Us, what was so what so was everybody's role at that point? At that point, Felisa was more uh, into the computer. Excuse me, into the computers. Uh, Felisa was more into the computers. So she was kind of running the office secretarial duties. Pretty much, yeah. And we was top heavy. We was overstaffed in the office. Okay. We was overstaffed everywhere. So, it was uh, the 90s. This was pre-NAFTA. This was when America got fat. You know what I mean? As a country. You know what I mean? So we had all this mess going on. And, oh, the bureaucracy. Oh, boy. There was actually, we had enough fat built in our company, we made bureaucracy. This is when you were working on McDonald's, right? No, this is, I was still in high school. Oh, okay. So that's not, not, this is it's not, not your fault yeah, that no. got fat then. No, no, no. I had nothing to do with this one. Okay. So, so what was uh, Cindy's place? Cindy's place, she kind of, she went to college. She was the... Well, Felisa she, went to she's classes. Your, she's your mom's twin. She's pretty hardcore. Yeah, Cindy's pretty hardcore, pretty heavy-hitting. She uh, needs to eat more. 
<laughs> she, <laughs> she didn't get the fat notice. She I didn't love her. So anyway, notice. she got she went to college and she met her husband in college, uh, Jason. Yep. And they got into uh, carving, uh, uh, chainsaw carving. Was well, Jason ran the mill for a while? He worked in the mill. There was Jason. There was Dan, uh, Rob. Uh, Quite a few of them in the mill. So, so, uh, and there got to be too many chiefs, and not enough Indians. Yeah, was but Cindy's, as far as the company's concerned, at this point in time, she was pretty. She was kind of running the books. Player. She was kind of the accountant, yes. and kind of overseeing everything. We there. was broke as a joke. We had to rob Peter to pay Paul. And let me tell you, my sister got a crash course on the how to turn nothing into something. She could take pennies. My wife, when me and my, when me and, when mommy started out there, well, I call my wife mommy. I'm sorry. But when mommy started out there, she was uh, the front. She was at the front desk. Mm -hmm. And when mommy started out there, we burnt the roads down. She would go from company to company picking up a check every day to get it to the bank. We started every patch of timber on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time Monday evening come around, we had enough of the timber in there. We was done selling wood off of that patch of timber. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we worked Saturday, Sunday. We worked all the time. We was always working, trying to get ourselves dug back out but of the But that goes back made. to what we were saying. This the self-made hole we the, made ourselves. Well, that goes back to just the grit and the determination yeah. to get yourself oh, yeah. back on top. Yeah. Uh, so Rob, Rob's kind of running the mill, and you're kind of starting to transition into trucking yes. in, the, in the woods at in this point. In the woods at this point, yeah. Okay, so as time goes on, uh, we, we kind of start losing people here. So Felicia was the yes. first one to step away, correct? Yes, yes. And that was kind of um, she just kind of a mutual thing. She didn't yeah, really fit she into had, the. Uh, she had everywhere you turned. We was in the wood industry. We was in the raw products industry, and NAFTA was signed. Uh, not getting right political, but but, but I think but, the importance uh, of, it was turned into instead of nationalism, the country was turned into globalism. And globalism was kicking the crap out of our company, period. And the fact that we made this self-made. Yeah. So you're getting double whammy. Yeah, good double whammy. So one by one, and all my brothers and sisters, they was made to try to make their own future. Mom and dad yeah. to try to get them. Well, to that's why everybody was raised. Yes, yes. It's the way everybody was raised. So one by one, they started dropping off. And my one sister does, uh, she, they got their own company. Well, so so Felicia was the first one to yeah, step away. Yeah, she was the first one to step and away. And I wouldn't say that was, um, I mean, there was always a little bit of animosity or maybe mm -hmm. some bad feelings, but that was kind of a mutual split. Nothing Family really, businesses is, is Yeah, is but I mean, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't like no war of anything. No, she just wasn't. kind of seen the writing on the yeah. wall and stepped yeah. away. So then that, she was probably gone for what, four or five years? Yeah. And then... There started being friction again because we still wouldn't turn a profit. Right, so then... Uh, uh, Cindy stepped away. Yep. She basically had opportunities to go with her husband to, to pursue yes, the Bear they Hollow had thing. Good opportunity, and they and they and uh, it wasn't just them. It was it was nasty. Uh, it was bad to relive. Uh, pff, that was all a nasty time in our career. But I think the I think the writing was on the wall that Cindy was going to step away and leave the yes, company. Yes, her husband was very talented. Jason, they was still they very still do it yet today. Oh, they do good, yeah. And, and 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 it was basically at that point in time they could be in the retail industry. Uh, in, in in art, he was an artisan, a chainsaw artisan, and and, and it, we was holding them back at that point. Well, yeah, because whenever she ended up leaving and stepping away from the harv timber harvest business, they relocated their business. She was still scared. <laughs> She'll take, she said, it was the scariest thing in the world stepping away. But well, she said, her and your mom were pretty close too. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they're a lot alike. Yep. And uh, so they they stepped away. They moved their whole business what yep. to uh, French Lake. fifty miles north. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I I don't know much about their business. I think they got off to a slow start, but they've got one heck of a yes, setup. Yes, they got now. one heck of a setup going now. Uh, which this is probably fifteen years removed from yeah, the decision probably. to leave yep. somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Now, so, now, it's bro and, my wife, and his wife, and me and my bro was very, very yeah, I close wish I, uh, and I'll, to the point of a fault. Well, uh, to hit on Rob here a little bit, um, you guys are so different. Yes, but I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get the memo. <laughs> no, you know, well, you're, but he's very intelligent. He's very mysterious. He's very... Uh, very well read and 
this little podunk meal wasn't exactly what his uh, big well, plans well, was. Well, before we get before we get to that is, I mean, at this point now that Felicia's left and Cindy Cindy has yeah. left. I mean, in your mind, you and Rob, this is your this is your yes. this is your livelihood that you guys are gonna yes. do this thing. Rob's gonna yes. run the mill, you're gonna run the woods. And the whole time, if we're covering what my mentality is in this, the whole time my only motive, and I'm being honest with y'all right now, my only motive was to help whoever was in charge. Right. This you whole had... time I had no idea it was gonna shake down like this. And all I ever did was supported, loved, and Whoever's in charge, I'm going to help them. Well, okay, well, that one fell off. So you're in charge, I'm going to help you. Right. You know what I mean? It was, mm -hmm. it was, it was, that's and, the way, and every time it was catastrophic to me, but it wasn't that bad until it this, become my brother. So at this point, your mom and dad, even yet today, your mom and dad are still heavily involved in the oh, operation. Yeah. I mean, so you, as far as the siblings are concerned, you guys are supporting staff to Phil and Joanne. Yes, oh, yes. So not all of us got the memo, but that's what our jobs <laughs> was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot so, of memos don't go out in uh, the ancient family. <laughs> that's what it is. Maybe they need a new email service. I guess not. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Cindy leaves. It's you and Rob. You guys are gonna do this thing. You're gonna you're gonna figure it out. And that was probably what four or five years. It was you and Rob uh, after. Yeah, and Cindy. the wives. Yeah, and Cindy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after the wives left. And then I'd say Rob probably kind of dropped a little bit of a bombshell on you. You didn't quite see that one coming. Not totally. I'd, he oh. got unhappy because basically there was not growth and there was not future. And there was not expansion. And he, and, he, and he read a lot. He learned a lot. He was very intelligent. The, the company's projectory wasn't like Yeah, up our company he... projectory is like... <laughs> and his projectory is like... <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like... You know, why y'all stupid? I don't know. We just, that's all the smart they made us. You know what I mean? <laughs> we just don't know no better. So anyway, so that kind of come to head, regrettably, and I took it terribly. I was terrible. Well, you and, you and Rob were, were close. He, I was close. <laughs> <laughs> I was too reliant on my brother. That's, the fact of the matter is, if you're out there, anybody impressionable out there, don't put all your faith in your sibling. I mean, love your siblings, but don't put people in boxes that they don't put themselves in. And that's what I'm guilty of. And so it was and it was hard on her family and stuff. It was terrible. The Rob breakup well, was really terrible. I don't want to go into a bunch of details about... But anyways, he got a good... He went to move, move to upstate New York where there's a lot of timber. And, and he, had a a good, of, he had a good opportunity. Yes, and a good opportunity and well-earned opportunity. And uh, start his life. So here I am. I'm the last sibling. Mom and dad's, uh, of course, dad gets, he got the same cancer Greg had, but he had it a lot better. Yeah. And he fought and won that. And, and I, I remember I remember after the Rob thing, kind of uh, the dust has settled a little bit. And me and you had a lot of. Um, yeah. At that time, he become my brother. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I don't want to go into a lot yeah. of details about that, but you had. I was a lot pretty of, broken. You had a lot of yeah. pretty serious concerns about the uh, whether or not you could do this, whether or not yeah. you su could succeed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Still do. But yeah, yeah, but I think you've got it now. Because at this it. point... We just won't do that good. But, it's not. <laughs> but, but, but at this point in life, whenever all this happens, you know a lot about logging. Yep. You don't know much about what's no. happened in the sawmill. Right. You don't, I mean, you've done some... Mechanically, training. I do, but production-wise, right. I Which don't. is... Yeah, which is the key. Well, right. it's yeah. it's a pretty big thing. So, so uh, long story short, after all these years of business, Logger Wade's the last one standing at the yep. sawmill. Yep, and I'm learning sawmill, and the guys are teaching me. I'll tell you what I've learned through all this. I've learned a real appreciation for people. Yep. We got the employees that you owe. If you got employees, you owe them that love, because they decided to put their faith and their life in you, and through this whole thing, and, 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 and I look, equipment is hardware, and your employees are your software. And it don't matter, you got to, I mean, it's just the fact that people is, is, puts enough faith in you to trust you to help them in their future, it, 
I, I, I go to work every day and I just follow people. I get my ass chewed on it. Sorry. <laughs> no. I get my butt chewed on a daily basis and love every minute of it. <laughs> the other day, one of them said, I'm going to whip somebody's butt. Which you didn't say butt. I said, well, don't whip, don't whip my butt. I said, I'm on your side. <laughs> <laughs> but they get into it with each other. And me, for some reason, I got this sickness. When they're mad at each other, even when they're mad at me, and they got some kind of bag of mess they're wanting to throw up or cough up or regurgitate, the fact that they're having it here. You know, I get up every morning, I come to the mill, first thing I do is put a band on uh, and help grease the saw, or help lube the sawmill and get the sawmill up and running, make sure everybody's there. The, the fact that I get to come to a place with people to do that, to me, is just how could you ever want anything different, you know? And so, that, that's my take on that. uh, just to um, hit on it a little bit, you guys have had some good years again. You've kind of dug yourself back yep, out of the holes. Better, and you're... Financially, making better. And a lot of that comes, a lot of the financial and controlling our debt and a lot of things like that, Dave Ramsey and this guy right here. He what controls his debt <laughs> and he's not afraid <laughs> to get dirty. Through you a curveball. And when you do stuff like this now, you can't be afraid to get to, If you want to pay a premium to keep your fingers clean, that's more of a premium than what you're going to clear. <laughs> you're paying Wall Street and the banks all your profits so you can keep your fingers clean. Now, there's one other person we did not give credit to during all this that deserves a lot of credit. Who's that? Your wife. Oh, yeah. Molly's put up a lot. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> so, being neighbors and oh, good yeah. friends with Logger Wade... And um, you're lucky. Yeah, we're very high-strung people. You're, you're lucky you're still alive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. are. Well, I'm married to Carpenter's daughter, and she is reserved. She is intelligent. Her dad's intelligent. Her mom's intelligent. She's reserved in, in a way she keeps a lid on everything. My wife has a, common, a calming effect on our whole family. But she's also... She's she's uh, gamed her voice over the years, and she's yeah. <laughs> she when we're acting stupid, she's gonna tell us we're acting stupid. And she's also <laughs> and I'm telling you one thing I've learned through all this, women, <laughs> women. I'm gonna tell you right now, women. And, 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 and there's there's toxic women out there that's it's, it's mad because they're yeah, they're, there's they're toxic mad everything. because of things, but <clears throat> there is women out there that has a common effect on people. I, I'm a convinced you pick the right woman, that's who should lead any company, is the right woman. Don't pick the wrong woman, but you pick the right woman, and that's who you just show up and you ask him what so, you're supposed to do next. So Ann plays, <laughs> Ann plays a huge part in the, in the oh, company very, now. And she, Big pretty, Mama and Ann pretty much runs the show. Right. And Big, Big Daddy just runs around and tries to do whatever <laughs> we're supposed to be doing. And that is he a, just that is a mouthful. Yeah. So. And I'm not trying to be like opposite of sexist or whatever. No, you know, no, no. I'm telling you how it is. There's something about a woman's personality. The way a woman is geared is just so beautiful. I mean, they're wonderful creatures. <laughs> <laughs> In every way. You know what I mean? So close. <laughs> but you get a poisonous, you get a poisonous woman uh -huh. and that, that, can, that can utilize their, their, their high points for... For bad things. We'll call them talons. <laughs> yeah. Then that, that, you stay experience. away from that son of a buck. Yeah. It's like, it's yeah, you stay uh -huh. away from it. But you get a wonderful woman that's got a calming effect, that's got, that can stand up and see the big picture, you know. So now we've got to current times, Phil H. Timber Harvest and Logger Wade. What's your, what do you, where do you want to see the company at in 10 years? I want, oh, that's a loaded question. Where do we have time? Oh my gosh. You're good. I want you to make sure. That. So you got three boys. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay, let me be selfish here. Okay, the what what I'm after in this whole mess, in this this business, I got almost a sick love for people. I want to make sure our people it don't matter. Last week I spent two days pulling lumber. I don't care Which if for you people, pull lumber, for, for that's, people, like, that's the job. For that's people a great job. for people that don't know, pulling lumber is like the the lowest on the totem pole. Mm -hmm. Entry level position. Entry, yeah. Entry level That's position. That's where you hire in at. Anywhere from a lumber puller to the daggone to a truck driver to the, the, the sawmill manager, them people, and that's the main thing. And I don't want to bring on another stick of production 
or another person that I don't feel like I can service properly. And to me, serving it, now that's one box. So I got one box with these people and I feel the weight on my shoulders. These people, they have put their faith in us. We have got, I'll cut off my freaking arm if that's what it takes to take care of these people. So you got this box of people you've got to take care of. Then on the other side, you got the future that's growing up, that's, that's looking at dad out here doing things and they're like, dad, I think I want, I want to do what you do. You, you sure about that, boy? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't there nothing you can do well, I better. fell into this trap you know, once. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, so it turned, and, and none of my kids come out with horns on their head or, or you know, cross-eyed or nothing, you know. So anyways, not being, you know, whatever that is. That's I'm sure how, there's some kind of, That's because of how wonderful ism. Is. I'm sure yeah, there's some yeah. kind of ism that that is. It's, it's, it's all because of Anne. Crossism? Yeah. What? Crossism. Yeah, that's yeah, I'm sure there's some kind of ism that I'm crossing the line on. But anyways, <laughs> so I got that. That, that. that scares the crap out of me. And then I got my, you know, my wife and all this stuff. And, and that's, that's all that matters to me. That, that's it. But, I mean, I don't have any more of a business plan than that. <laughs> now, so, I want to, oh, it, 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 you know, and I talk to the people all the time. I'm like, well, if you all stick around, you know, they ask me, well, what do you think? I was like, well, if you all stick around, if you're going to stick around and you want to retire this son of a buck, well, we'll have to figure out how everybody fits in the equation, you know. And, 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 and me, I try to, you know, this guy don't just do this. This guy don't just do that. We all do it all. Yeah. You know, where are we weak at? Well, you that's know a, what you're doing. Go over and do that. That's a whole nother. That's a whole nother conversation about. I mean, about the intricacy of, of all that stuff management is and, just yeah, ridiculous. That's, there's a lot. All right, you know, me and you had this conversation a whole lot. You've got what thirty something employees. Yep. Uh, I I one time I had seven, and now I. But got it's it. easy. It's two different businesses. Oh wait, yeah, there's the, it's apples they go, and oranges. There's 35 people at our company, but. This guy goes over here and does this. This guy, you know. But, I mean, but, they all swap. But to your point. But there is that what you do. Now, you know, with what he does is like, all right, well, somebody wants us to do a bunch of this bull mess. Go make them happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Next thing you know, he gets a phone call. The law showed up. Well, you ain't making them happy at all. And this <laughs> landowner actually wants you in handcuffs and pulled off the property. You know what well, So, wait, what exactly do you do? do? I'm not for sure. <laughs> so, so, he smuggles drugs. But, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but to your Wrong point is, is that no. was a different channel i'm sorry <laughs> but to your point is someday you're the marriage therapist and some days you're the psychologist yep. uh, psychiatrist and my know. point is i don't care what i am right you i just, just love right. the fact that i'm married, right so you know all right um, so. well if i may a testament there to uh logger wade himself is that you asked him where he wants to be in 10 years, and he said he's going to be selfish. Yeah. And then he went on to say that all he cares about is seeing other so, people So, well, I guess my... That's selfish watching other people be happy. You okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, I mean, are That's you... That's not uh, their thing. That becomes you, my thing. Are, oh, look at you smile. Are you, are, you, uh, are you hopeful that one of your kids shows interest in it? Bittersweet. I'm going to try to... My goal, and I know it sounds stupid, but my goal is to stay alive doing what I'm doing. Anybody that's done what I'm doing knows what I'm talking about. If I can stay alive doing what I'm doing, my goal is to never expose my children to that if I can keep from it. Because um, you've had some close calls. Oh, God, we could do a whole podcast on that. <laughs> but anyways, uh, to stay alive and to, and to be there to help the next generation along, you know. And, and, it, and my to point is... To do what is, your dad did to you. Ne- to teach yes, you yes. And never to grow past what you can handle. Right. If you can't manage it, don't bite it off. You know what I mean? All right, so let's hit, uh, before we wrap this thing up, I want to hit on two more things with you. Okay. Uh, one, you've been doing YouTube for, what, 11 years? God. What? I remember, <laughs> I remember you, this is one of those conversations, I remember you coming down here at the house, and I, I know what you were doing. You were just throwing a dart to all get my reaction. Yep. <laughs> And uh, you tell me, I was like, hey, Mikey, I think I'm going to start me a YouTube channel. I think that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Look at you now. <laughs> I said, uh, me and uh, Captain Cleveland had a conversation the other day that uh, Mikey is actually hogging all the YouTubes. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey took all the YouTubes. No, no. I was... So, uh, but where I'm going with this is, uh, you. I remember you saying you're going to start a YouTube channel, and I, I remember telling you it's stupid. And I remember thinking, well, that crazy son of a gun. And then, um, then I don't... after I started YouTube, it like 
It worked lukewarm at best. Well, I remember. And I kept thinking, you know, if I just did what Mikey could do. Know. <laughs> you know what I mean? If I just did this, this silly this guy is, does this crazy stuff, and it, somehow he always comes and falls in it and comes out smelling like a rose. <laughs> right? Like, how did you make a, how is everything not broke on that? You know, how did that somehow work? I asked that question. I had to start reading I kept telling myself, if I, because every time I do something like that, everything ends up broke. <laughs> You know, <laughs> multiple times. Well, where's your internet? Thinking, if that's I could like, just make a YouTube channel well, and then you see like, Ken Block make it, then it works for where's him. Where's your engine at? Yeah. <laughs> is it in the front or the back? <laughs> All right. So you guys are getting, you're, you're, you're derailing my train here. I'm getting okay. my train back on the track. Did you say derailing? Derailing. Oh, derailing. No, that's derailing. <laughs> <laughs> that's when your train derails in the hood. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so the you, YouTube has been good to you. Yeah, it, what is now that you taught me how to do it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So after 11 years, I watched Start Perfect do YouTube, and now I'm starting to learn how to do YouTube. <laughs> the first 10 years, mostly floundering. <laughs> All right, so. So you're telling me there's a procedure here? Yeah, there's a, there's a procedure. Yeah. Yeah. I suck. Okay, so it's not just surgery, man. There's a procedure. So let's you can't do surgery with a chainsaw. <laughs> let's, talk, <laughs> let's talk about one of the big things that come out of YouTube. Good connections. Connections, and yes. you also got a TV deal. Oh yeah, yeah, we did that too. Yeah, that turned out pretty good. It turned out. I'd say that's. Uh, I think you, you're a little too humble about that. Oh yeah, but it was. I don't know. It was fun. It, the guys that done that was. I fell in love with the camera. The best part about Axeman is we all got drunk one night. <laughs> <laughs> I got to drink beer with an actor's son. I got to drink beer with an uh, awesome guy from uh, uh, Massachusetts that does commercials for Hulu and it actually got an Oscar for... Uh, uh, tennis at ESPN and then I got to drink beer with a guy that is the guy that done uh, maybe I need to start drinking beer so I can get a TV deal right. <laughs> yeah, I got to drink beer with the guy that done the Canadian ice road truckers the ice road trucker mess I got he was the guy that got Gabe Rygard uh, he did Gabe Rygard's crew in Axeman the early Axeman the to me, the highlight of Axeman was getting to hang out with them guys. And this stuff that they exposed me to and taught me. Uh, Brave, Matt, and Jason, if you see this, buddy, that was my highlight of Axeman. So I remember... You know, uh, we I remember, got tiny out of it, but that didn't have the traction of getting to hang out with you guys. That was the, my highlight of So Axeman. I remember having a lot of conversations with you before... I remember you coming down here to the shop and telling me, hey, you know, hey, we got this TV deal. We're going to be filming for Axeman. And you guys were, you were nervous about it, but you were excited about it. You didn't mm -hmm. know what to expect. Yeah. We had a lot of conversations. Oh, and the crew fell apart. Yeah. Oh, God. But, uh, you, but, <laughs> oh. but you got, but you, you had no idea what you got yourself into, to be honest with you. No, I still don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is, where I'm going with this is, is what is the... What was the, yeah, I think you've already answered what was the funnest part. What was the most unexpected thing, but what was the biggest drag of it? Like, what was the two ends of the spectrum? The, the fact that, because mm, I don't think, it, love, I don't think, it, I don't think it interrupted production as much as you no, thought. No, it, it didn't. Be. It didn't. And they, they wanted something, and I, I got confused. They wanted me to be something that was more than what I could be at the time. I think I could have done it now. But at the time, I was not mentally prepped for what they wanted me to be. Uh, I'll keep it that vague. But the employees, and I was told by multiple it people. Caused that, some, it caused some issues. Yes. And I didn't know, and, and one of them told me, I don't want nothing to do with this. Yeah. I, this is not what I asked. And I'm like, That's not what they signed up for. Of course, and here's where I fall short. I, I fell short in this plenty of times. Don't put people in boxes that they don't put themselves in. And I totally, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. This is going to do this. This is going to be, you know, this is your opportunity. Blah, 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 blah. Here you go. You know, strap your mic on. You know what I mean? <laughs> Smile and, they're, and they're all like, I come here today to pull wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I, and, it, and, it, and it 
five o'clock, I'm gonna go back home. <laughs> <laughs> I would and say, you know, the last thing I want is a bunch of baggage. <laughs> or to be put on national TV <laughs> doing something embarrassing that they're gonna use against me. And of course, my positive minded thinking is I'm like, Yes, it might make you look foolish, but you'll be out there. At least you'll be yeah. you'll be out there. You'll be you doing may, something. May, yeah, may, be, and I told him the rules when they started this. I said, I don't care how stupid you make me look. I'm totally fine in my personality. I don't care how stupid you make me look and all that mess. But we are a good company. We do a good job on the land, and our people are good people. So don't cross them three lines, and I don't care what you can make me look stupid as you want. You know what I mean? And at the end of it, it they pretty much done that. I think, <laughs> I think one thing that uh, surprised me the most is uh, I think your mom enjoyed it a lot more than she thought she was going to. Yes. Yes, <laughs> she was great on that. Yeah, she And, of course, Big Daddy, he's always got you, – you, you, you get – in the type of business we're in, you get so much backlash. Right. Big Daddy was like, well, I'm going to fix this. Said, you know you're not going <laughs> to fix it. There's people that put sweaters on freaking trees. <laughs> Where's his Jeep? Show me his Jeep. I'm going to fix it. There's, there's people that drive around, sweaters, there's boy, people drive around, around with the engine yeah. in the wrong end of their car. Yeah, you know? I'm going to drop a tree right on his Jeep. I'll fix him. <laughs> Button-up T-shirt yeah. in a, on his, you know – Tree. All right, guys. Well, I think uh, I think we're gonna wrap this one up. You got anything else you want to say? I do. I got two points I want to right. make. Um, my favorite part about Wade's outlook on life. If you could tell one quick story, when the log truck rolled over and the tow truck showed up. <laughs> <laughs> Can you please just please just tell that story. Okay. Well, see now the way I see the story, I'll tell you how I see it. Okay. Stevie was having a rough patch, mm -hmm. so, and, and Stevie's kind of my. And when it comes to social online, Stevie's kind of my uh, other guy on uh -huh, social yeah. media. Uh, He's your captain, cleaning. Yeah, uh -huh. Stevie was having a rough patch. His mom is battling a lot of things, and he cares so much about his mother. He wouldn't think it straight. He he's got a CDLs, and every evening after we get in logging all day, we load up our log trucks. So when we come to the woods, we bring log trucks. And when we go home in the evening, we all take a load of logs back home with us for efficiency. Because... Nat so you commute to work. Because of Nat. Log truck. Yeah. Because I'm going to put all my blame on Nat. So anyways... <laughs> so anyways... Uh, I think we're going to do a NAFTA podcast at yeah. some point. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> so Stevie gets a push. He's got a hot truck. His truck is powerful. His truck's got a lot of pulling power. Got ogre rear ends and stuff like that. And he went, he got a top heavy load, logs are top heavy. And he was a little green, and he'll admit that. But he got to pushing around a curb a little too much, and the truck flopped over. Logs went everywhere, truck got screwed up. He was uh, okay, though. Stevie was okay. okay. He was a little shook. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but the thing so. about Stevie, though, is he's got glass in his back. <laughs> he got chunks of glass in his back, but he was still funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? It don't matter what it is. <laughs> it's in a Cyro Rick busted the mask logs all over those and pixie sticks and a yellow jacket's nest, mind Yeah. <laughs> well, well aware of the yellow jacket's nest. And here's Steve's walking around still being funny. He never dropped out of character, <laughs> even though his life flashed before his eyes, <laughs> literally. So we're sitting there. So the part of the story that he gets he likes is the fact that we're all sitting there. This place is a mess. Guardrails all tangled up into a pretzel and everything else. <laughs> Log truck's laying on his side. Log truck's laying on his side, busting the glass everywhere. You know, and uh, here comes this big fancy tow truck when fancy stretched out units to retrieve a semi, you know. <laughs> so this, uh, this tow truck pulls up, and this guy gets out and looks at me. And of course, there's fire trucks, ambulance, not ambulance, but there's fire trucks and first Please responders, see, yeah. cops, stuff oh. everywhere. And I look at it and I go, it's this one. <laughs> 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 he just looked at me like, <laughs> and the guy driving the fire truck looks at me and I said, well, you'd have hooked up your stuff about it. I said something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you ought to show him a picture. Like, spotted a picture. <laughs> I mean, it is a, yeah, it was pretty obvious. but made, a, It made for a good uh, yeah. video on my channel. <laughs> So you found some light and you made a joke. Yeah. You yeah. just don't take yeah. it too seriously. Yeah. Then we go, take he, any, yeah. Then we go back and he wrecks his drone. So it's <laughs> yeah. That's right. Two oh, things I just showed you my recent wreck. Oh, oh yeah, I got to take that. Yeah. yeah but uh, And then the second thing I want to point out, because I've been listening to you guys talk and I haven't had a lot of time to think. Here. Sorry about that. That's No, no, it's good. I like it. I enjoyed it. But I got some time to think. Oh, boy. Here we go. You know why he's so successful? And people in the log industry might not be? 
Skidder, Brutus, Tiny. <laughs> they all got engines in the front. <laughs> the one twenty has got Where's the engine the in the back. Where's the motor in the <laughs> back? That's why Big Mom and Big Daddy made it, because that daggone Studebaker. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the Dirt Perfect's got an excavator. Yeah. Engine's in the back. And there's not, it's just not a coincidence that Studebaker and excavator rhymes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Solving the world's yeah, problems. <laughs> Connecting dots that don't go. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's right. Square peg, round hole. It'll fit. Right. You just need a bigger hammer. Loop it up with a crown. Here we go. So uh, you're on YouTube. You're logger weight on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come here. Yeah, Y'all get bored and get hard up for entertainment. <laughs> he runs out of videos. Come check me yeah. out. Logger weight. Now, I want to uh, point out right now that you are still way ahead of me in the YouTube world. Not much. <laughs> no. I don't know what I did to YouTube. <laughs> But they do not like me you right now. I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. And for the people who are actually watching this, if we ever post this up on just And I've actually been there. making good bitches. I've been getting comments like, yeah. these are your best bitches you ever made. It's like, you set your bar pretty low. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> That's hey, it. His old boy, he, he ended up, okay, never mind. And I want to point out that you're fully responsible for my YouTube career. <laughs> He should have done it five years prior to, but in his mind, and this is one thing anybody out there is starting, thinking about starting a YouTube channel, start it. Yeah. Get your yeah. YouTube channel going. Quit poking on the back, you know, being scared of your first, but when you come out of the gate, come out of the gate hungry. Don't fart around like I did. You'll get stuck in the wrong algorithm, and if you try to fix it later, it, it takes a little, but he's, but I am, I'm following the Dirt Perfect, uh, School of YouTubes <laughs> with two S's, YouTubes, yeah. and I'm <laughs> and I'm starting to it's starting to react. Pay off. Yep. And don't be afraid in the beginning. I mean, I walked no, up to I... Lightning 18 and told him to shut up. I had 79 <laughs> subscribers. I'm a big deal. <laughs> well, I posted my first. Technically, a bigger deal. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. My, my first. Uh, it's free to start a YouTube channel. Yeah. My mm -hmm. first probably 30 videos I posted were with my phone. And then pretty much everybody has a phone already. Yeah, I mean, so it... Uh, and I'll tell you what a And you can ed edit on your phone. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, good. Which you still phone. do. Fair, I still do to this day. Most people don't know that. Yeah. Or believe Practice it. your, you know, your whatever, hold your phone. But I'll tell you what. Oh, hold it the right a way. A professional photographer that, 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 that photographates. <laughs> yeah. <for>, photographates. <laughs> for TV... Uh, my, Many of the shows that you've watched on television, this guy has played a pretty big part in. So this is not low-key stuff. He told me, film with what you're comfortable with. Yep. Don't get all caught up in all the mess. And people, I think, um, this may be a whole other subject one day too, but um, you had your uh, adventure in with the Axeman and on syndicated TV. Mm -hmm. But even those guys will tell you that uh, YouTube's becoming the new reality TV. Oh, because, yeah. You know, yeah. keep it authentic, oh, keep it real, and, oh, yeah. uh, you know, they can interact with us. And, oh, yeah. Um, it's, I, oh, and Matt, one night, one night we was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Matt, he was real good. He had, he had goals and stuff. Mm -hmm. He was going somewhere in life. You know what I mean? So, he's, 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 me and Matt sat down. I, the, you you know, trying to say his ten-year plan wasn't selfish? Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't it was, hey, right. His, his ten-year plan was was way higher than my ten-year plan. So I'm sitting there watching, and, he, and he's he editing. has an eleven-year plan. He's, he, he's try, trying to gain a year on me. Yeah. <laughs> so he's sitting there editing, and I'm drinking, sitting back here watching him, trying to learn, you know, and still have fun, and. He's doing commercials for Hulu, and he's using the same editor that I'm using, Adobe. <laughs> he's yeah. using Adobe, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So, I mean, like all this stuff you're seeing, it's just people, it's just like a mill ride. If you can, you, 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 you can get the newest end mill with the CNC and all this crap, or you can take this old hunk of junker that weighs four million pounds. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? That, that, that can only chuck up a half inch. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and still turn out the, the good the guy knows it's, how it's to, all in the The guy operator. knows how to run it, yep. yep. That's no different than a, an old excavator versus a brand new one. You know what I mean? It's uh, Some of the new ones have the engine on the side. I'm going to beat that horse till it's fully dead. <laughs> <laughs> I think the horse got killed with the tree yeah, back yeah. in the day. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the engine in the back got the dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we probably ought to end it on that note. Yeah. But so. uh, he sells some t-shirts and some hats and stuff at uh, loggerway.com. Yep, loggerway.com on my stuff. If, yeah. you, if you want anything from... And you're... Yeah. 
and you're on Facebook, Instagram, yeah, YouTube. Yeah, I'm on all the mess. Logger weight on everything. Yeah, just look, just type in logger weight on all the mess. And, and if this uh, if this virus ever gets out of here, we'll probably be at some shows and stuff. Yes, mm -hmm. whenever I'm up for whatever. These guys, I love these guys. Very witty. Very. I mean, these are attractive. These guys attract success. I thought you were gonna call me attractive. You are attractive. Man. <laughs> you are. You're all good looking. He's always better looking. Anytime we went somewhere. Girls that hit on him, you know, so I'm like, <laughs> and I was like, always claimed him. And he was like, he's bashful enough. He's like, yeah, okay. You know the funny part? You know, like, you seen him looking at me? Well, I was standing right you know the funny side. Part about, <laughs> you know, the funny part about that is I get mistaken for him. <laughs> you log away. I'm there perfect. Oh, no, well, never mind. Until, until we start talking, then it's pretty <laughs> You're nowhere near as loud as he's, I thought you yeah, were. Yeah, he's pretty loud and cackling. <laughs> All right, Wade. Thanks right. for being here, man. Thank you, guys. It's it. been an honor to get to be on here with you. Uh, you got you, you. You truly got an incredible story. Your family's got an incredible story. Where you guys got? Like I said, you need to get Big Mama someday. Yeah, we tell will. The story. I don't feel like I tell you what. It don't matter what point I get in life. My life don't feel like. I'm just glad to get to be a part of everybody else's life. The you know? uh, but but you but the point of what I wanted to cover tonight is you guys should have been down there a few times. Oh just, my gosh! Yes, things. I mean people. Oh my gosh, I don't know how far you can kick somebody down and they'll get back up. <laughs> About $3.3 million, you million just, dollars, apparently. You can just see the financial institute go, get back up, get back up. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> this is going to hurt. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, guys. You see equipment manufacturer going, there ain't no way these idiots will buy it. <laughs> oh, they said he signed. You know what I mean? We were Man, I was barely in my 20s. I didn't build my house for like 15 years. <laughs> I was had notes tied up in my name. <laughs> He's out of high school. Son yes, yes, yes. He's legal. Yeah. Yes. That's it. <laughs> How old you got to be to sign that note on that skitter? <laughs> Is the engine in the front or the back? <laughs> We're, we'll take it. <laughs> that thing's got plastic on the seat. <laughs> The air Dude. conditioner works. <laughs> you just turn and it it's on. got glass. <laughs> if Big Deal was around then, I'd give him a run for his money, boys. I'm telling you. Had a format. You know, the, 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 you know he's got How a many people ring. started skidding with the, with the floor mat that protected your feet from getting that stuff on the actual floor mat? <laughs> so you left the plastic on the floor mat? That yeah, was the yeah for a while just to feel, you know. More upper class yeah. with, with my eyeball deep dead. You're like, man, <laughs> you get a brand new iPhone, you leave the screen protector on yeah. so you can't stand it no more. Yep. Uh -huh. so, all right, you want to say goodbye now? Yep. Wade, man, appreciate you being here. It's Thank been a blast. Thanks Thank for listening. You. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.